out uh, luxury luxury gaming shout out luxury luxury gaming hello guys jesse cotton here with luxury games fresh off second place at ycs santiago chile 2023 which will hopefully be nearing the end of this godforsaken format but there is one event left ycs philly so i figured i'd share my deck list with you guys so you are well prepared i'm not going to that event so i'm going to give you as much information as i can think of at least right now um yeah so you see on screen what my deck list look like i will kind of go through specific choices in a second before i begin huge shout outs to luxury gaming my sponsor for making me uh able to go to these events if you want to see my deck list for future events and past events this is the place to go on this channel uh so i post them if you want to see other meta analysis you can check out my channel as well though jesse cotton ygo also on youtube and i stream on twitch but uh yeah big thanks luxury gaming they make this possible and I wouldn't be here without them. Anyways, let me go into the deck list here. So I played Kash Tira. I think that it's just the best deck, and there's no way around it. Uh, it's very different from all the other decks in the format. So if people are trying to target those decks or even just have hate cards for them, they tend to be a lot worse versus the Kash Tira cards. And this deck was being held in check largely by the fact that it was being less targeted. And even at that point, it was still putting up good numbers. So with less targets on its shoulder, this deck seems to be performing a lot better, uh, and the results are kind of showing that. So I, I think that people should be putting more stuff in for cash moving forward. I just think that um, that combined with, like, it's kind of hard to target this and other stuff, the fact that the macro cosmos type effects are still so good, it has multiple ways to kind of disrupt the opponents in very unique ways. Like, moving apart the extra deck, the main deck, blocking zones, and the macro are four different ways that are uh, very different than any other decks have like normal plan to beat you uh so preparing for all those while also preparing for other stuff is just super hard so uh, i think that's what a lot of people a lot of decks will struggle with and that's why this just is great uh, and then also and this deck is really toxic to play against if you're the one going second unless you're playing the mirror if you're playing the mirror it's actually a decent mirror match so you kind of have to join them to not hit yourself uh of course when you play other matchups this is not fun it's it's really just like they better have the outs to your engine. If they don't, they're just dead. Um, and yeah. That being said, though, the deck performed pretty well. Uh, the other things to talk about, though, are the utility lineup. So uh, in this format, we're seeing a lot more. We're transitioning to less value-based and more one-card combo with trying to trade hand traps to get your combo through. This is largely in part Super Heavy Samurai. I'm kind of pushing that agenda. Uh, you want to be able to survive against Super Heavy and not just lose going second against them while also being able to do enough going first, and they're playing a lot of hand traps as well. So that's kind of like where we ended up, um, at least from my perspective, in the meta. Uh, and Cash can keep up with that, but it does change a couple things. For one, Desires is great in value games, um, but it takes away from your utility spots. So you have to give up utility uh, engine for from value, which may not be the best in this format. And then also the play is poorly into draw. So Desires has been drawn from my deck at this point. Uh, though if I'm suspecting a lot of mirror matches, I would still play Desires. Um, you can see, though, I already did prep a lot from the mirror side, and I'm going to go over the board. Uh, if we ex keep on seeing mirror matches, and maybe this is the case with Philly, you do put the Desires back in the deck. I think they're really good in the mirror because it, it is way more of a value matchup. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my philosophy there. Uh, and I figured as well that Cash would be the best and most popular deck, so I didn't want to ignore Cash. In fact, that I wanted to give a lot of my focus towards Cash, but I have a decent main deck to... Uh, geared towards it better than I expect other people's to be. And then post side adopt my deck would just be extremely well positioned, I think, compared to what other people's decks would look like. Now I didn't want to ignore the other decks, but I figured uh to beat decks like uh Super Heavy or Pirelli and such, uh game one, there were only a couple good blowouts. After that, then other stuff you need like pairings of multiple cards working together to be good. And I didn't want to overload my deck with those cards because those would detract from dealing with cash. Because like I said before, they don't overlap very well. So that's why the only kind of uh, cards that target super heavy are in here are the Droll and the Shifter, because I figured they'd be sufficient on their own, uh, and that's why the rest are more targeted towards cash. And the exception there is Ash Blossom. I think Ash Blossom does have to be in your main or side somewhere. Uh, it, it is okay versus some decks, but it's, and then it's needed versus decks like Labyrinth and Despia, where it's very strong. So I did think you need it somewhere in here, and there was nothing else I wanted to swap from my main or side to really go here instead. And this kind of 55 is what I was set on, so Ash went in there as the most general use card, and it was fine. Um, but yeah, it's not amazing in the mirror, and it's not amazing with Super Heavy or Pirelli. Although it's not dead either, and it can get there in um, very grindy games, which does come up. So this isn't a card I hate, but it's also probably the weakest of the utility cards that are in my deck. 
Now, I'm also playing six Book of Moons. I'm sticking with this trend even after the last YCS, uh, and we're seeing more decks that this is supposedly bad against. However, I still think these cards are fantastic going first as far as removal goes. Um, we're seeing a lot of negation in this format and not a crazy amount of removal. So the removal tends to shine as people are prepared for like negation as in hand traps. Uh, and then people are trying to actually just remove the removers with cards like uh, Herald of the Abyss or Kaijus for the Pearly Noirs. So they're expecting not to have to deal with that stuff. And when that happens, Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse can go pretty hard. Like a Book of Moon on Soul Piercer is nuts. Uh, same as with a cash card. Those are insane. Uh, and then they're good at breaking fields as well. They're not insane, but they are solid. So it gives you enough versatility going first or second. Uh, and they're not terrible in other matchups as well. Like books still force Regulus or Baron. Uh, again, super heavy. So if they're not going super combo heavy for build and just going for a standard and field, you can sometimes break through it just with like some combination hand traps and multiple books and then your engine being solid because Apo is not that scary for you. You can oftentimes just attack over it or force it out. Not that hard. Um, yeah, so I think the books are extremely well positioned. Uh, oh, and there's Pirelli as well. If they go a Pirelli leap, you can chain a book and then nothing will happen for the leap. So that's also fantastic. Um, if this is a trend that keeps on happening, as well as with Econ and Talons being played, even if it's not on the main or in the side, then Forbidden Lands may have to come back in the meta because that was a card from before. But for now, I mean, those Lands is like pretty poor against other stuff. There's no Runic or very little Runic, so we're not seeing it. Curious to see where that goes from there, but um, we have to remember why Lance was played in the first place, and it's not like the reason to play it has disappeared entirely. It's just it's uh, kind of fallen off. We'll see how that changes, though, as the results from all these events are, are flooding in and people are adapting the decks to the current meta. The last choice I want to talk about is Nibiru. Um, this is a card I didn't even play beforehand to prepare for Cash Tier, but I've noticed players are being a lot more aggressive with their Cash Tier Turn 1 fields. Fortunately, parts of Nibiru, Nibiru not existing, and also the deck rip and extra deck rip being very strong against the new decks as well. So just doing those, it's a lot more valuable across the board. Whereas ripping part of the deck versus something like Runic, um, which was popular before, wasn't as meaningful. Uh, versus stuff like Pirelli, it's ripping apart their like cats in their deck destroys their grind game, and uh, hitting the extra deck is great as well. And you can also hit the one of pieces in the super heavy deck that makes stuff like Hacker way more valuable now than I think it was before in the meta. Um, so I feel like cash players are inclined a lot more to go for mind hacker play, myself included. I almost I think I did the Arise Hard play once. Um, almost every other time went for mind hacker because I really valued ripping apart their deck in this meta. Like Nibiru wasn't very well represented. And a lot of people were kind of ignoring Cash's ability to just smash the deck because it's been a while since we've seen that uh, actually happening. So expecting people to do that to me, I put Nibiru in my deck. And remember, it's more than summon the token in attack mode so you can crash your monster in. You don't want to have to resort to normal summoning a hand trap and making a uh, Donner, which you can do, but obviously it's just inefficient. Yeah. But uh, yeah, crashing your monster in is fine. And I did that a couple times and it won me games. So I'm happy I played Nibiru. Um... Obviously, Droll, Shift, and Nibiru are way more volatile in cards than uh, something else that is more across the field. Average, like Imperms, uh, even Lances, maybe, cards I was playing before. But I, I wanted these high-impact cards um, to cover my match other matchups, and then I also wanted to focus the high-impact cards in the mirror. Um, yeah, so that's what my deck looked like. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I cited out like those volatile tech cards a lot because obviously they have bad matchups. So it's questionable if that should change if the meta is diverse, but honestly, I feel like I was fine. Um, Droll was probably the worst one for me because I only played one super heavy, but that's obviously like observation bias, like knowing what happened. You could play against more super heavy Samurais. Uh, I only do Droll versus a Plunder deck, and it was fine, and then I normal summoned it twice um, in other spots, and this sided out almost every time. I do side it out in the mirror. Um, I go in the mirror is to let them make their field because... I think it's not that hard of a deal, field to deal with, and try and break the field and hit them on the, the comeback. Um, so Droll's sided out in the mirror. Droll and Shifter are the first to go, and then Ash if I want to put more cards in, but it's not always sided out. Um, yeah, so other things to talk about in the, in the in the main deck. So I stuck with one Rise Heart. I've explained this in past videos, so if you want to go hear about that, go check it out. Um, but just just is low quality extender, not a card I really want to draw. Even though Droll's in the meta, I don't actually want to draw this card, so I'm fine not playing more, and uh, I'm happy with it. Um, sticking to that. Now, I also cut Ogre and Preparations. Now, if you recall, I said this isn't really as much of a value-based meta as before. It's a lot more um, pushing through, like, trading hand traps and then trying to break open those floodgates to be able to play. Um, and in that sense, you want as many cards in your hand to be as live as possible. 
And given you already had a little more risky and volatile like stuff with draw shift and Nibiru not always being live, I really need to make sure the engine as well was always live. Uh, or the card does wrong on the engine. So that's why as well with Rise Hard, it's at one. It's not a great card by itself. Uh, and then Ogre and Prep were contributing to that uh, not always being list off the hand. That means five lock is a lot harder, but that's not a big deal, I think. So that's the main deck. I was pretty happy with it. Um, I think the, the 55 main and side were, were great. And uh, the only thing I'd swap around is, is probably the card between them, if you expect in different decks, um, for the most part, at least. Uh, I'll get on to the side deck next, because I've been talking about it. So Bell's a big one I think should be in your side deck. I do not think it's good enough to main because it's, it's horrid in the mirror match, and it's probably not great versus uh, uh, Pirelli or Super Heavy either. But it's still really good versus stuff like Despia and Labyrinth, and those decks do exist, and they are relatively popular, So or, and Mathematic too. So I wouldn't just ignore it. I think this card has to be in your side. Um, I was very happy to play this card, and I used this card a bunch, and when I sided it in, I was happy to draw it. So yeah, this card should for sure be in your side deck. If you're playing any sort of deck like this, I think most decks should just have Bell on their side. It, 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 I think it's relatively good. Um, I know I keep saying that, but I don't really know how to explain it. It just covers a lot of bases. One thing to note, actually, is versus Labyrinth, um, oftentimes you're better off trying to prevent their engine from triggering, and you're targeting the engine rather than targeting the back row, um, which is interesting because that's not how you normally target down a back row deck, although sometimes you can do that. I tend to be doing that more often with Labyrinth than I have with other decks in the past. Um, it's important to keep that in mind. You have multiple plans of attack when playing against these decks. You can try to go after the back row, go after the engine. Um, and in often cases, you want to be able to switch on a dime to the other strategy because it's hard to keep up with both. But yeah, I think oftentimes going after the engine is pretty good. That's why Ash and Bell post side are fantastic versus Labyrinth. I'm also playing Ogre. I just wanted a little bit more for uh, Super Heavy Samurai post side. Um, I only played one Super Heavy Samurai, so I sided in for that. But. Uh, this card wasn't... I don't think I ever used it. It was a uh, fine, I guess. Um, this is the one card I'm not really sure about, because maybe Super Heavy Samurai is not that popular. But that also could just be variants, right? I didn't play that many. So, I mean, I played one. So, yeah, not sure. Um, one thing to note is I don't like Gamma. Uh, with keeping every single card on my hand to be live, I don't want to have Gamma clogged, clogging my hand, and I don't want Driver either. So, I didn't play those cards. Um, I just think they're kind of too volatile and risky. And I have enough of that going on other cards of the deck that I think have a better payoff anyways. So, yeah. Now, under the spells, three enemy controller. I still think this card is really good in the mirror match. Uh, and it can be used as a disruption when you go first as well. This card is fantastic. Um, oftentimes you're made to go first as well in the mirror. which And I often make my opponent go first as well. And Econ is fine disruption when you go first. Also providing an excellent way to play through fields going second. So this card is phenomenal. Probably my favorite spell card of all time, and I really hope with Vault Survivor's Leagues coming up, this card is collectively rare, because it's a rare in this set, and I have my fingers crossed, because this card is uh, card is nice. Anyways, back room removal, I, I stuck with the Storms and Dusters. Now, I had them in the main deck before, because they kind of uh, fell in line with that uh, value strategy, and helped with blowouts. Um, I still wanted them in my deck, but they were way worse versus Pirelli Super Heavy, so that's why they're on the main. They're still very good in the mirror, and I still saw them in versus Labyrinth, even if it's not... Um, if you know, I'm not fully targeting their back row. Yeah, these cards are good. Uh, I don't know too much to say. I feel like it's a pretty simple card. And Talents is another one. So I didn't main deck this card because I feel like going first is finicky. It doesn't always really do what you want to. Uh, I don't really, always even want to hand my opponent. So I wasn't really a fan of this card uh, going first, which is a big reason why it's not in the main deck. However, going second in the mirror, this card is crazy. So that's why it's in here is for that purpose. However, if I ever had a, one of these high volatility cards, I didn't want in my main deck. I went to my deck post side. This was an easy swap where if they hand trap me now, uh, I didn't feel as bad. And then also playing into like other into fields would be a little easier because obviously going second versus most stuff, it does tend to be live. Um, unless I'm like straight up fucking them out with Droll Shifter, at which point that talents is probably okay. But yeah, I felt pretty uh, pretty good about this. Uh, I, I'm pretty happy I didn't main deck it because there are many times even when I did set it in where it wasn't fantastic, but it was still better than like a, a Droll. Um... Maybe if it's all mirrors, you swap out Droll for Talents. I can't quite say, though. Um, maybe I'd rather have Econ at that point, but Econ's a lot worse than other matchups. I don't know. Hard to say. Um, those are the 55. I was really happy with the way that panned out. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So, moving on to the extra deck now. I did not play Barone again. However, with the six level 3 tuners in my side deck, I probably should have. Uh, that is the only thing I did miss. I would cut the Garura. I never used it once. Uh, I equipped it once or twice, but it was never actually relevant. So, 
Darren? Yeah, but wasn't big on it before. Anyways, everything else should be relatively standard. No Draco sex because that scenario where it comes up with Gozen is fictitious and never happens. Um, one big eye because the card's not really that good. I've summoned it like twice, maybe in the whole time playing this deck. Um, three your eyes heart because if they if you've seen playing two, they can try to target them down. Uh, you never actually summon the third, but it's scary when you have two. And I've done this to people where I can end on mine hacking unicorn. I hit one, and then the other just snipes. Uh, that's pretty good. Or even if you just get ashed on a theosis, and then just go right rip one, and then summon like birth or whatever make thing, and then you have none. So yeah. Um, what else to talk about? Goliath is still good because there's still some runic decks, and it hits gamma as well. And there's random destruction effects. It's good to have. So I, I wanted to have it in there. Um, it is important though that if you play it, your opponent can't steal it. And I've done this to my opponent as well, where you mind hacker the Goliath and then you attach their Goliath to your Rise Heart. So if you're planning on holding Gamma, be careful that is a thing that could happen. Um, and it's also kind of why I want to stay away from destruction effects if I'm playing Goliath myself, because that can happen. Uh, other things to know about is Fossil Warrior and not Skull Wagon. So Wagon is for Floodgates, but I've figured we'd see a lot less of the Floodgates game uh, aimed towards. Kashtira, and that was correct, so I went for the one that was better in the mirror match, and that's just Skull Warrior can get you there in the mirror to clean up fields. And it won me one game. I only used it once, but the game, I, I did use it. It did win me that game, so I guess it did its job, and I'm happy with it. Um, two Mind Hackers, the other big one. As I said, ripping decks and extra decks right now is way stronger than it was before, as the decks are less well-equipped to deal with it, and people are also paying less attention to it. So you can steal way more games with the Mind Hackers now, uh, especially when you go first to mind hacker them once, you could just deck them out with the second mind hacker or just destroy their resource game, which is fantastic. What's big to note as well, though, is uh, when you're going first and you mind hacker them, I often like that their mind hacker, if it's only one of, because if they crack through your field as a cashier player, which isn't that hard, then having that mind hacker to rip apart your extra deck now and your main deck can be rough. Especially if you started with something like Pross and now you have like 10 cards banished between like Unicorn and Rise Heart or whatever, you're going to lose a lot of your deck. Uh, and that's scary, so... Or if you desire going first as well, it's bad. Uh, so yeah, uh, having the second mind hacker making sure they can hit it means that happens a lot. Um, and it's important to note that when you're going for Zeus lines, you don't really have an XCD you want to just throw away. Mind hacker is the only one that gives you value before the Zeus. So that happens a lot as well. Um, and that's free, free value. So yeah, I, I'm very happy I played the second mind hacker. I only used the second mind hacker, I think, twice. But it's hard to know how many times it made a difference in the mirror where they specifically didn't rip a mind hacker because they saw I played two. Uh, that one's less hard to, I guess, uh, value because, you know, it's not a really a number-based thing. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's my necklace for the event. I was very happy with most of it. I hope you I gave you guys some very uh, in-depth uh, opinions on kind of how I feel about the meta and the format right now uh, and tech choices. And you can use these opinions to build your deck for Philly. Again, I sadly won't be there. I will be playing the Master Duel World's Grind instead. So I wish you all luck. If I was going, I still would play Kashtira to some degree similar to this piece.